Huntington, West Virginia. The folks here, blue collar, but they bleed Kelly Green. And their thundering herd take the field as a ranked team for the first time in six years behind the reigning conference MVP, Brendan Knox. Happy to welcome you to stadium's coverage of Conference USA football live from the banks of the Ohio River as FAU brings the nation's third longest winning streak into Huntington against number 22 Marshall. And the defense has been phenomenal. Look at the numbers and where they rank in college football. They allow fewer than 10 points a game. They're number six in the nation in total defense. And AJ, those third down numbers are eye-popping. They're allowing opponents just one out of every five third down opportunities. How they're doing it, how Marshall's defense is getting it done is exactly how you draw it up in the film room. But here we go. Let's show how they're get, actually getting it done. You got to win your one-on-one -on -one matchup. There's many times, no matter what position you play on defense, you're going to be in a one-on-one -on -one position where you have to beat the man in front of you. And they tend to win those. This one we call the dip and rip. Watch Hodge coming off the edge here. It's almost like he was never there. Just dips it, gives it the, his back to the tackle. Good luck. He's usually going to get a strip sack on that one too. And when we say everybody can hit, watch this. Steven Gilmore coming in off the corner, aggressive on a corner blitz, makes the play for a huge negative yardage play. And do your job. All that means is play how we, what we tell you to do. Your fundamentals, your technique, stay home when you need to, and things are going to work out when we because we can rally to the ball. That's why I say we party at the ball here. Just watch every single play. It seems like it's a race to the football. It's a race to get in on tackles, and they all love it, and they love to finish. It's been 21 days since FAU last played. 371 days since they last lost. October the 18th of last year against Marshall. Kickoff is next. It's a little chilly. Temperatures in the low 50s. Overcast skies do not expect rain. As you see, the Thundering Herd getting set to return this opening kick. Marshall did not expect to be able to return many kicks because Aaron Sherrieri has been a very good kickoff specialist for FAU so far this season, albeit in just one game. Four kicks, all of them touchbacks. And that is how this one's going to start as well. Marshall from the 25-yard line. Because their run game has been so powerful. Brendan Knox in the backfield. That pass is caught by Artie Henry. There were two receivers in the area. It looked like Xavier Gaines nearly got a hand on it, but it ends up right to Henry, and it's a pickup of nine. Another pass, and this one completes to Corey Gamage, who gets the corner. A little stiff arm, and he's out across the 40. Had a breakout game last week. Five receptions, 65 yards. A lot of different guys to, to step up today, and some guys are going to get opportunities that they uh, they may not have had if it had been somewhere else. Marshall has been great on third down. This is third and long, and almost picked. It's caught by Marshall. It's been that kind of season for the Thundering Herd. Artie Henry had it fall right into his chest as he was on his back. Look at this, Chris. Mungin steps in front. Looks like he is going to wrestle that interception away, but Artie Henry finds a way while he's... They sure did. LeJonte Wester deep to try to return. He lets it bounce, then picks it up at the four and goes down at the four. Eli Neal, the reigning Conference USA Player of the Week with the big stop on special teams. But now he's the starter. And he helped lead that comeback against Charlotte three weeks ago in the only game they've played. FAU is also shorthanded at the running back position today. B.J. Emmons is out. Good to keep moving. And they like to go tempo. And they run right into the green, waiting arms of Jamari Edwards. Maybe a gain of one, that's it. McCammon, the running back, heading out in motion. Pressure off the edge, they throw back into it. And a good job by Eli Neal making another stop. You saw him on special teams, and he made a big play there as they sent pressure off the edge. Since this place opened up in 1991, only three teams better at their current stadiums, Alabama, Boise State, and Georgia Southern. And Marshall only has one more road trip the rest of the season. Every other game is right here. Playing here for the first time in over a month. Third down and five. Trotty trying to keep it. Can't even get back to the line of scrimmage. 
Beckett and Hodge, tag team duo, force it a punt. As Marshall defense, they, they gave him a little glimmer of hope. They were making some plays early. You see a little bit of a high snap there. He couldn't really tell if that was, I don't believe that was a designed QB run. I think he may have bailed on the play once he. But it's another third down and long for Marshall, and they're going long. Keaton got a step, but can't haul it in with one hand. Late flag. Wow. Perhaps one hand was being held, and that's why he was only able to reach out with one. You see Carell Smith right there. He's, he's grabbing. He's using his left hand to hold the right hand of Talit Keaton, and yeah. They would have had to kick it away. Instead, it's first and 10, and Knox across the 40. He's averaging 114 yards per game this season. They converted on the last one thanks to a pass interference penalty. Wells pressured again, skips out of it, and completes it. Knox down the sideline. He may go. Brendan Knox inside the 10 and across the pylon. Touchdown, Marshall. Knox down the side. Chris, watch him finish this run. Oh, he pushed guys for five yards. Marshall, 7 nothing. Come on back. Marshall with a 7 to nothing lead on a third and four conversion. Brendan Knox, 64-yard touchdown catch and run. Brendan Knox just finds a way to, he, he steps up to help to block, and then he he's just releases into the flat, and nobody accounts for him. Touchdown reception by Brendan Knox. Play clock to two, to one. Just to get the snap off in time. Trani tried to dump it off. That was a forward pass, so I don't, I don't think the whistle blew, but it was definitely forward. That's not going to be a touchdown. Don't tell Marshall that, Chris. No, hey, Owen Porter thinks it is. But they're going to try to sell it. I would, too. Still haven't seen an official call from the from the the referee Petrani I mean clearly threw that at least a yard forward and in, in attempted to throw it to Malcolm Davidson and they'll they'll look at this and make the right call 7 nothing Marshall here on an overcast day in Huntington temps in the low 50s original programming check your local television listings go to watchstadium.com here's Knox again first touch since that 64 yard touchdown catch and run and he picks up eight on first down it's a fun sight to see our second time calling Marshall this year they just do things the right way Knox again seeking his way through to the 26 yard line first down they say he's 100% now. He can play all three wide receiver positions. Very important today because Willie Johnson and Brock Thompson are out. There goes Knox again. He gets about seven. And a quick snap. Trani keeps it and gets nothing. Had 94 rushing yards on 10 carries in that Charlotte win. Nothing so far today. Do what Willie likes to do. Another handoff. And maybe a yard off left guard. Let's be honest, he's the real offensive coordinator here. He calls the plays. Here comes the pressure. Trotty under pressure, and down he goes. Oh, it's hard to put a hat on all those green shirts coming through. Kobe Cumberlander with the sack. Chris, this was masterfully done by Marshall's defense. They disguised their blitz so that you'll see Gilmore coming off the edge there late. Maybe he doesn't get there, but hey, you know what? He opens it up. He gets Kobe Cumberlander a one-on-one. -on -one. It's been tough to move the ball on this FAU defense. Just that 64-yard conversion on third down for a touchdown. And they score this game. Xavier Gaines picks up 10 and a first down. Had 25 catches and three touchdowns over four years at Clemson and 
back that way again. This time he gets popped, still hangs on, and that's Bowers who he was chirping with. Help for your confidence, not only as, with the quarterback and TJ Chase, but just the rest of the team. Seeing how, yeah, we don't have any points yet, but we can move the ball. After the pickup of six. And Trotty, faced with pressure again, has to get rid of it. Had Jamari Edwards closing in. Third down and four for Nick Trani in this FAU offense. Second straight drive into Marshall territory. Trani completes. And oh, what a what a job to hang on to that ball. That's the running back, Larry McCammon, right at the sticks. Watch the end of this play. McCammon coming out of the backfield. That was actually played very, very well by Beckett and Neal. It's got to be frustrating, Chris. I think with the targeting rule, and I, I understand why it's there and it should be there, but when you're around the goal line and somebody's trying to score or you're trying to stop somebody from scoring, it's just so difficult, I think, to kind of legislate that rule. Like, if you're trying to get in, that's blocked. To stop you, uh-oh. FAU gets on it, but Marshall preserves the lead. Josh Ball, the offensive lineman. I mean, you talk about what these offensive linemen do for Marshall, but it looked like it was Ethan Driscoll. He's in some traffic there. Trani going long, picked off. Hung up there. And Brandon Drayton makes the interception. Brandon Drayton with the gigantic play for this Marshall defense. They're reeling a bit. They just gave up a big explosive run. That doesn't happen to this Marshall defense. Drayton is sitting here, and he is all over. He was not fooled. One, two feet, secure the ball, gets the ball back to his offense, and that was just a gigantic play from Drayton and this Marshall D. So now Marshall gets it back on offense. Up by one, Wells quickly completes it to Keaton. And he picks up seven yards on first down. Doc Holliday, double face mask. Just put a helmet on, make it three face mask. Wells, deep, single coverage, caught by Gamage. We mentioned earlier, Chris, Gamage has to make up for some of the production loss with Brock Thompson out of the lineup. He's working on Mungin right here, and that paid the coverage. Is this, this deep ball. You see some, some contact back and forth. I think that's probably a good no call. But Gamage, the, the concentration it takes to be running full speed and kind of over the defender's shoulder almost with contact on both sides. No timeouts, though, for FAU. Final minute of this first half, and Trani throws it away. Fans want an intentional grounding because I don't think that ball got to the original line of scrimmage. Did he get out of the pocket? I don't think so. And now, check out Darius Hodge at the bottom of your screen. He was harassing Tronti from the beginning. Little spin move back to the outside, almost has Tronti there. Tronti feels him. Marshall has elected hit. not to take the 10 second runoff. You have to find a way to, to not touch him. Find a way. You hear that a lot from coaches. That's right. Didn't happen there. Marshall into FAU territory with 23 seconds. The clock stops after the catch by Keaton. Some pushing, some shoving with Amon Ross. One timeout for Marshall. Here on the campus of Marshall University, overcast football weather. No sun, not much offense this afternoon in Huntington, West Virginia. Down 7-6 here to start the third. They're going to get the football as 19-point underdogs. And a chance to return it. Zion Gilbert out across the 20. Good look here, AJ. See Chase going up there with those strong hands. He's got it there. Yeah, he's oh, got it. 100% catch. Yeah, he was well down once that ball was taken out. Look at Bowers trying to set. 
Pickup of two on first down, so it's second and 18. Way behind the chains after the holding penalty. Pressure coming. Tronny in trouble. Tronny set. Tavante Beckett and Stephen Gilmore. Once again, this Marshall defense, they hold it until the snap. They hit the blitz running, moving downhill to not give it away to the offensive line so they can change their protection. And then once they get a sniff of that quarterback, you got to knock the, knock the running back down and not just hold on to him. So third down, it's still third and long. Pressure, and Marshall gets to him again. But another flag is down. Owen oh, Porter flying around. Chase in close to the formation. All kinds of issues there with the first handling the snap and then what looked like it was going to be a jet sweep. And Trotty was able to just grab it and go down. Yeah, they brought Chase in after they looked at the sidelines. The check with me looks like they may have been setting up a jet sweep type thing, but rough snap. You watch Tavante Beckett. He reads it right away, sifts through the garbage and makes sure Trotty's not going anywhere. All right, so we'll see what the, the young freshman can do here. Grant Wells, he's never trailed. But now 9-7. These fans in the building are nervous. Can he settle him down? Oh, boy, he had Corey Gamage. Two flags in the secondary. He's been really good defensively so far this season. On second down, Wells completes it. Good catch by Artie Henry. He had to stretch way out for that one. And it'll set up a third down and two. Good Grant Wells on the run. Got to feel pretty good to connect here. Jeez. <laughs> Outstretched arms right there of Artie Henry. Trips near side. Short side of the field. Hand off. Knox. First down and more. Midfield. Patiently picking his way to the 41-yard line. That one's fun to watch, Chris. It's the definition of shifty. Look at this. We talk about those jump cuts. And look at him using his blockers, his receivers down the field. Okay, here you go. Just let you guys shield the defenders. I'll do what I can. Jump back and forth. I'm going to be very, very patient. He seems to never panic with the ball. And I, I really, I, that's why I really enjoy watching him run. He always seems to be in control and be a couple steps ahead of the defense. 58 rushing yards. He's over 100 yards from scrimmage. Wells cranks it deep. Henry! Touchdown! 41-yard hookup. And Marshall is back on top. Grant Wells standing tall in the pocket. What a Beautiful ball. Artie Henry reels this thing in. 14-9 Marshall. AJ, he just ran by the defense. He is right here in the middle of this three-man formation and just watch him. He has outside leverage. He reads it, breaks across the face without a question. That ball, Grant Wells saw that 20 yards before it, the, the receiver did. Grant Wells saw that developing and knew that was he, where he was going to go with that ball. That one dangerously close to going out of bounds, and that one was muffed. Picked up. Zion Gilbert. Boy, that, that had the makings of disaster from the get-go. Marshall with a short field at the 47-yard line. Up by five. And this feels like a really important drive. Gambage on the screen. Makes a man miss. First down to the 35-yard line. An impressive sophomore from Delray Beach, Florida. It's a good town. That's where I live. It must be, Chris. Xavier Gage, you see him out on the edge. That's what gets this thing going. When you're unselfish. They got their work cut out for them. Big dose of Brendan Knox is coming. Knox spinning flag as he gets down to the four-yard line. Nifty run. That flag's thrown right as he was spinning through the, the FAU defense. Wow.
Wells to the end zone for Gamage. He caught it, but he's out of bounds. Could not get a foot in. Love the idea, though. Throw it up. Let your big guy at 6'4", 227 go up and get it. Let's see if Gamage can get a foot down. Working on Mungin there. Makes the catch. Oh, his toes is left. The toes are in the white. It was close. It was very close. From 36. And this one has enough leg, and it's good. But you know what? Hey, you got in his way. You did your job. He's a kicker. He'll be fine. That pass complete for minimal yardage to the tight end, Logan Peterson. A good starting field position here for FAU. Now run it with Davidson, and he gets nothing. Beckett in on that stop with Sam Burton. But the guy loves contact. He loves being physical with anybody. Tight end, guard, tackle, center, running back, fullbacks, receivers. He doesn't care. He's coming. Tronny stepping up in trouble and hit hard by Beckett. It's been a heck of a series for Beckett. <laughs> Owen Porter came over and brushed him off. As we're ISOed on Beckett, you just see him just always aware of where the ball is, and he is ready to finish anyone who is near him with the ball. 13 seconds left here in the third quarter. As Wells completes it to Gamage. Sixth catch of the game for Gamage for 79 yards. Well, Marshall trailed for well, a little under two minutes for the first time all season. They retake the lead and take an eight-point lead into the fourth quarter against Florida Atlantic. Marshall trying to stay perfect this season as fall sets in. Hey, Fat Patties. Best burger in town, right? Fans ought to be celebrating a win at Fat Patty's after this one. Wells on second down. Wide open man. It's Xavier Gaines. Lost the ball, but out of bounds. He's fortunate he was on the boundary. First down, Marshall. Here he is. He is always creates matchup issues wherever he is. Almost setting up a little wheel route. If someone would have jumped that earlier, you could have seen him turning up the sideline. But right there, Wells gets it to him as he does fumble out of bounds, but not before he picks up that first down. I have a feeling that FAU needs something like that to go their way. All the momentum on the Marshall side now. Knox gets the corner turned and gets hit late. And there's the flag. Almost 360 pounds. It's questionable what he really is. That, he, he's out in this game. They need that big body in this 3-4 defense. Henry made that grab. That's his fifth catch of the game. 75 yards and had that 41-yard touchdown. And it's a lot of bend but don't break. They've given up 342 total yards, but there's two touchdowns and now two field goals. That gives Marshall an 11-point lead as Shane Chuchi comes through. I think eventually it's going to help all of these players and all these coaches. On third down, setting up the screen. Marshall all over it. Beckett with the finger wag once again. Beckett is just too fast. His instincts are too good. And he's too athletic. <laughs> it has nothing to do with you. You're already engaged. You didn't see it. It would happen to anybody. Second and seven, Tronny going long, incomplete off the fingertips of Adams. You thought they had this for a split second here, Chris. Bowers with the coverage over the top. Let's see, Tronny, he's been standing tough all day long, taking some punishment from Marshall. Jesus, Edwards comes around. This still, he's able to get a hand on it and not reel this in. Bowers comes over the top. 5.20 to go. Four-man rush, and they get to him from the inside. Jamari Edwards. 
No, that's not 99. That's 59. Emmanuel Bush. Sorry, Bushy boy. Doc loves him because he's a rare, true freshman who can stand up physically, AJ. You got to love when you can bring a four-man rush and you can still get the quarterback on the ground. Yeah, the sticks say fourth down. So does the scoreboard, yeah. We've got it at third. You think Willie wants, wants that changed? Tronny steps up, and down he goes. <laughs> Elijah Alston, Eli Neal. To keep hope alive. Fourth and five. Marshall sends three. Tronny to the end zone. Incomplete. And a turnover on downs. Just to tie the game. I had no problem with the call. Just did not execute. Brendan Knox. Trying to get to 100 on the ground once again. He has three straight games where he's gone over 100 on the ground. He's at 92 after that run. That's been something that they have been really, really good at offense and defense is third down so far this year. Today, not so much. Big hole, and that's how this football game will end, more than likely. Sheldon Evans with his biggest run of the game to cap this one off. And this will be five wins and all five by double digits. The Marshall Thundering Herd snapping the third longest winning streak in the country. FAU streak of eight consecutive wins dating back over a year ago is over. And Doc says... I'm not risking anything with COVID. We're heading right to the locker room. He didn't take any chances, and he's done a great job limiting COVID exposure, taking every necessary precaution, and it's the program's best start since that 11-0 start back in 2014. That team finished with just one loss all season in the top 25. And Doc Holliday joining us now. Uh, Coach, kind of a weird game, but you know what? You guys ended up with a W again. I think you can look past uh, some of the weirdness in this one and say, hey, we did it. Well, there's no question. You know, I thought, uh, you know, we had, we had some kids out there early on, some wide outs that hadn't played a whole lot of football. So I thought there were some plays that we left on the field there. But how about that defense just plays their tail off. And, you know, that's a good football team. I mean, that team won the conference championship a year ago. And anytime you're located in Boca and got the facilities they have, they're going to have players. So we knew it was going to be a fight going in. Just proud of the way our kids fought and uh, found a way to win the game. That's what matters. Doc, what did FAU do uh, defensively at times to, especially on third down, to kind of stifle your offense? Well, it had to be guys in the box. I mean, you know, obviously we got to do a little better job throwing the football at times. But uh, like I said, I had three, my three starting wideouts were out. Uh, we substituted with those three guys who ended up making some nice plays there. But, you know, when they, same old deal. When they load the box like they loaded the box, then, and we got to find a way to make plays on the outside and win our one-on-ones. We struggle with that a little bit, but we'll get better. We run out of things to say about Brendan Knox. Today <laughs> Today did a little something different in the passing game. That was yeah. the play of the game on third down in the first half. Yeah, he's a player. I mean, he's just an excellent football player. He's a, he's a great kid. He's a better kid than he is a player, to be honest with you. And uh, just so proud of him. And, and, again, you know, there's a times during the season, guys, especially with everything we're dealing with right now, you're going to have to grind one out. And we had to grind one out today and just proud of our players and coaches that we got that done. All right, Doc Holliday, thank you so much. Congratulations, 5-0, and oh, the Thundering Herd in, tw in 2020. We'll take it. Thanks, guys. Have Absolutely. a great day. Uh -huh. Well, Florida Atlantic's eight-game winning streak is over, and the Marshall Thundering Herd improved to 5-0 and oh on the season, playing their first game as a ranked team in six years. Marshall does it again with defense. They came in, give it up nine and a half points per game. They only gave up nine, A.J., yeah, it seems like whatever situation this Marshall defense finds themselves in, they're going to find a way out of it. Yeah, it was a, uh, one of those grinded out games, and, and Doc Holliday mentioned that after the, afterwards to us. Yeah, sometimes you just have to grind one out and, and just win a game, and it may be ugly at times. And I think that's good for your team. you got to win many different ways, and I think Doc is proud of how his guys fought, especially his defense. And 
Once they get a couple more guys healthy on the offensive side of the ball, they feel pretty good about where they're going.